like I said, the meeting is going to be to be recorded so that we will be able to view the meeting afterwards. And those who might have failed to attend also, <clears throat> we have the opportunity to to see what transpired in the meeting. Uh, I would like to invite you all to today's uh, session. We are going to have two presentations as uh, usual, like last week. Uh, the first one is going to be on good sensor practices, <clears throat> which is going to be led by uh, Mrs. Marisi uh, Kenya. And then the second one is going to be on uh, food affection and food per perception, which I'm going to, to lead. If we have questions during the presentations, please let's feel uh, free to post those questions in the chat. Uh, I'll be attending to the questions, uh, compiling them, so that at the end we will leave some time, 10 minutes or so, to attend to, to those questions. During my own presentations, uh, Marisa will do the same as well. She will be my chair, attending to the questions and um, assisting me. Uh, answering those questions. Otherwise, uh, without further ado, I think I can end the floor now to Marisa to uh, start the presentation if she's ready to do so. Over to you, Marisa. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, James. Let me just share my presentation. James, can you see my presentation? James, can you see my presentation? I can see it now, Marisa, thank you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining. No, no we can't see, I can't see. Hi. I can't see. Uh, how many yeah, people cannot see? Can others confirm if they can't? Maybe it's your settings. I can see it myself. I can see it. Yeah, so can you please uh, try to leave the meeting and rejoin in case that can solve the issue? If you are not seeing the presentation. And uh, before Marisi pro, uh, progresses, we have to apologize for the sound. We tried to work on the settings. It seems it's not working for now. We'll try to improve on that uh, later on. You'll find out that when people are joining the meeting, there is some annoying sound that keeps uh, coming. Okay. Thank you, James. I'm going to start. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Marisa Kinier. I'm from the Department of Consumer and Food Sciences at the University of Pretoria. Um, as you know, this lecture forms part of the Inner Food Africa Sensory Training Toolbox. The main focus of Inner Food Africa is the locally driven co-development of plant-based value chains towards a more sustainable African food system with healthier diets and export potential. More information on Inner Food Africa is available on our website. There are four countries from Africa that's part of this Inner Food Africa project, Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia and South Africa. And within each country, there are a few organizations that's all working on this project. And we also have a few partners from Europe um, Norway, Finland, Belgium, and France. So to introduce the University of Pretoria Sensory Research Team, my name is Marisa. I'm a researcher in the Department of Consumer and Food Sciences. I have almost 20 years experience in contract research, both local and international. I do a lot of consulting for food companies and also presentation of short courses to the food industry. Um, Professor Rita Cook, she heads our department sensory research. She did the first lecture last week of the Inner Food Training um, Sensory Toolbox. Her title was Consumer Sensory Evaluation Step by Step. Sorry. I'm presenting from home and my dogs are barking. So um, her lecture was titled Consumer Sensory Evaluation Step by Step. If you've missed the presentation, it is available on the Inner Food 
Africa website. Dr. James McCarmy is a postdoctoral fellow in our department and he will be presenting after me today um, with the title Food Affection and Food Perception. We also have a mentor and advisor available for, from Finland, um, Professor Heli Tjurila. She's um, an extraordinary professor in our department. And then we have, last but not least, the very important people of our sensory team is the students. We have four PhD students, one master and three honor students. I'm borrowing this slide from my colleague from a presentation of last week. We can use sensory evaluation to answer three questions. The first being, are products the same or are they different? It's called dis discrimination sensory. Type two is what is the nature of the sensory properties of food product? That's when we describe um, food products. So it's called description sensory evaluation. Type three is how do consumers perceive and like or dislike products? Um, per perception. Type one and type two is called analytical sensory testing, while type three is consumer testing. In both analytical and consumer testing, the success will depend on good sensory practices. I think I fell in love with the discipline of sensory science in my second year of undergraduate studies. When I was approached by a lady that asked me if I want to come and taste some canned peaches. And I remember her words to me was, please come and taste the peaches. It will only take a few minutes of your time and don't worry, they taste very nice. I agreed and I remember sitting down and being fascinated with everything that I saw from the small containers, the three digit codes, and as well the neat presentation of the samples. Being an analytical person, I immediately noticed that there were exactly two slices of canned peaches in each of the container. Once I started with the evaluation form, it was clear that this will not only take a few minutes. As there was quite a few questions on each of the peach samples. Um, and I wanted to retaste, so the two, some, the two slices were not enough, and it would not take a few minutes. I also remember feeling a bit worried, since I, there was one sample that I really did not like. But since this lady told me up front, the sample stays ni nice, I did not feel comfortable to share my true experience. Thinking back of this experience, I realized the importance of good sensory practices, and I would like to share some ideas on how to achieve this. The very famous saying of, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, is also true in sensory science. As with all scientific tests, the appropriate selection, preparation, and presentation of samples while doing sensory research are crucial in ensuring the validity of the final results. When planning any sensory test, it's important that the serving temperature of the samples be specified in the test protocol. Samples must be treated in exactly the same way. Even before serving the samples, it must be stored in exactly the same way. Please make sure at what temperature your samples need to be stored. If your samples need to be refrigerated, please use the same refrigerator for all the samples, as there might be temperature differences between different refrigerators. Students always like to tell me their samples were stored at room temperature. And the question is, what does it mean? Um, room temperatures differ, differ from country to country and also in different seasons. Make sure that when you store the samples that they are stored exactly in the same way. If you present the samples, they must look exactly the same. To minimize biases um, that might affect the validity or the accuracy of a test, blind labeling are critical. What do I mean with blind labeling? It is a randomly selected three-digit three number. On the left, the samples are coded with AA, BB, CC, and that suggests an order, maybe from left to right, but if you look on this, at the samples on the right-hand side, there's no specific order. 
that you can identify. We always encourage um, technicians or students to use different codes for different people. Before deciding on the quantity of the samples to be served, consider the following. What is the normal serving size of the product? And what is the question being asked? How many attributes do you need to be evaluated? It's always more to serve slightly, it's always better to, slide, to serve slightly more than being too stingy. So specify the amount that needs to be consumed. Especially if it's a new or novel food product, consumers might be um, feeling a bit scared to try it. So tell them, please drink at least half of the juice before telling us whether you like it or not. Quantity served must be exactly the same and you can measure it by either weight or volume to, using precise equipment. Care should be taken to serve the samples in a standardized man manner. This includes the quantity. If quantities differ, it creates the idea that there's a difference in quality, which might influence your results. If you look at the photo on the left, sample 425's quantity is almost double than that of 303. It must be exactly the same. In the example on the right hand, Two different technicians assisted with the preparations of the samples. One used a black marker, while the other one used a red marker. For a different testing, samples should look identical. And even the color of a, the label should be identical. Samples should be served in identical containers. In my example on the left, the sensory technician first prepared sample 919 and 303, and then when she had to prepare sample 425, she realized that she ran out of glassware and she had to use a different class. So this immediately creates a quality, uh, the idea that some sample 425 are different from sample 919 and 303. Stickers should always be presented at the same level on each container. You can see sample 358 and 298 at the, or at the top of the container, while 456 are at the bottom. And once again, different colors were used while labeling. Technicians and students are often tempted to first label all the empty containers and to place them on the correct trace before adding any samples to the containers. But once they start to, to putting the samples or pouring the samples in the container, they realize that this is much more time consuming and it's also more easy to make a mistake. A better idea is to rather prepare samples on different trays or tables or areas and pouring the samples and marking them. This is the control sample, this is the reformulated sample, and then with helpers, place them in the correct serving order with the correct three-digit three blind code on the trays. While it is good practice to cover and close all samples, do not add the label or the sticker to the lid of the sample, as the participant will have to remove the lid before um, tasting or, and evaluating the sample. On the left, you can see the order was 456, 358, 298. But when the participant removed the lid, she accidentally switched the order around, and it's now 358, 456, 298. So rather put the sticker on the container itself and not on the lid, otherwise it will not have reliable results. Order effects or contrast effects can occur when the, when the perception of samples is influenced by the order in which they are presented. The sample that is served first will always have a special place. Consumers tend to compare sample two and sample three with the first sample. That's why it's important to um, randomize the serving order. If 
the first sample is of a high quality, followed by a sample of a lower quality. The rating of the second sample might even be lower just because they are comparing it to the first one. Randomized serving orders must always be um, considered during sample presentations. Next week's presentation by Ingen Birkett of Norfema will deal with experimental design and she will also assist us with um, suggestions on this. Remember, people also tend to discuss with their friends what they've just, just tasted. And they will tell their friend, I think sample 303 is the different one, or I preferred sample 626. So randomize the orders and use different codes for different people. In consumer sensory evaluation, it is important to serve food in the same way that it is normally consumed. Carriers is materials that can be used as a base or vehicle to present samples. For example, white sauces for spices and lettuce for um, salad dressing. In my example, um, it's tomato sauce. So consumers would hardly ever use consume tomato sauce by using a spoon, you know, eating it as is, but they would rather consume the samples with a carrier, in this case, potato chips. All aspects of serving samples must be standardized. In my example, uh, breakfast cereals, the following need to be considered. The same quantity of breakfast cereal measured by weight must be served in exactly the same container. As breakfast cereal is usually consumed in combination with milk, it is important to use the same type and quantity of milk. The timing of the process must also be standardized. For example, if milk is poured on the breakfast cereal, the amount of time between pouring and tasting must be standardized. Remember to give clear instructions and not only leave the milk in the booth and assume that the participant will know what to do. Palette cleansers are used before and in between tasting the food products. This is done to remove any flavors that participant might still experience. Um, water is used is the most common palate cleanser, but sometimes if you um, your product is fatty or oily, you might need something else. You can use warm water, diluted apple juice or tea. Sometimes if there's a um, or a cracker, if the food product has a tooth packing effect, if you've evaluated bread or something like that, you can use carrots to remove, remove the residual food that might be left over in your mouth before tasting the next sample. Instructions to participants must be clear and concise. They need to know what you expect of them. We always try to verbally explain to the participant what we expect even before they have to read it on the evaluation form. So we explain to the participant what what we want them to do and then they can read the instructions again on the evaluation form it is important not to try and influence to try not to influence your consumer um, remember my example of the peaches stays nice the consumers might not have feel comfortable in sharing their true experience um, it's important also to not to not give too much information on samples being presented as this might also influence their ratings. So what is good sensory practices? Samples must be stored and served at the correct temperature and same te um, correct and same temperature. Remember to make use of three digit codes that's randomly selected. Make sure you have enough helpers. Um, that to ensure that samples are prepared and served in a standardized manner. Make sure that the identity, the quantity is identical and that the presentation is neat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Maris, for an inspirational presentation on good sensory practices.
Now is the time for questions, colleagues. Questions are welcome. You can raise your 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 hand or post in the chat box, and then we attend to your questions. Do we have any questions, please? Uh, while you start thinking, uh, maybe about asking some, some some more questions, I just have something that is coming to my mind, Marisa. Maybe you can explain it to us uh, about participants eating just before the the test. Do you think that can have an effect on the ratings, on the validity of the results? Like I have a test at let's say 11 o'clock and then uh, 15 or 20 minutes before I just eat something that makes my, 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 my tummy full, something like that. How does it affect the Good. results? Thank you, James, for the question. Um, as we do not want the consumer to be too hungry and not only participate because they are hungry, we normally do ask participants not to eat anything, eat or drink anything at least 30 minutes before the evaluation starts. Oh, that's 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 very good. I think uh, our participants can hear that uh, you need to have a reasonable time be between taking a meal and having an actual evaluation so that there won't be interference. Uh, with the results from your feeding experiences. Thank you so much for that. Let me see, I seem to see something in the chat. Yes, James Chakwizira says, do the same apply for choice experience? I think what you were just explaining now. Uh, James, is that correct? When you say do the same apply for choice exper experiments, do you mean the suggestion that people should not eat immediately before the the test or you mean generally good sensory practices that were being explained by by maris um maybe marisa you can just address it Okay. as reference to yes definitely we need to use good sensory practices with all type of um, studies even the choice experiments the sample should be served in a standardized manner with a three digit code to minimize any that i can address but yes we need to apply all good sensory practices to all studies uh, that's wonderful. I see uh, a question from Rosemary uh, Nike Gude. Uh, she says, thank you for the presentation. How can we deal with sense adaptation in flavor identification, especially for multi-flavored products like coffee um, and beer? I think that's, that's a very important question. How can we deal with sense adaptation in flavor identification especially for multi-flavored products like coffee, beer, etc. Um, thank you, Rosemary, for the question. I think it's very important that if you have a product like beer or coffee, to make sure that they are served at the correct temperature. And with the sense adaptation that you mentioned, I would make use of a good um, palate cleanser. I would test them test it myself beforehand to make sure that it works that um, and also to give breaks to give the participant a break that they do not have to evaluate too many samples in too short time thank you marissa for the response i, I think it's uh, comprehensive in, in enough there is another question from omilo paula uh, the question is, do we have a specific number of customers, I think, um, or, or consumers who need to do testing? 
do we have a specific number of customers who need to do testing? Um, thank you, Ola or Omila, for the question. Um, I assume you are talking about consumers. I would uh, advise you to serve around, um, sorry, I would advise you to include a minimum of 50 consumers for a consumer test to make sure that the results are reliable. But it will also depend on the um, sample itself, how big the differences between the samples are. Thank you, Maris, for that. Any more questions? If we have them, please, you can feel free to raise up your hand or post in the chat box. Um, there's a question of how many samples can be served at a time? Should the samples be served individually or served together? Um, thank you. That's also a very important question. Yeah. I think it will depend on what you are tasting, how many samples you can serve at a time. Um, a more blander sample, like bread, you can obviously consume much more of, but if it's um, the high in flavor and aroma attributes, it might be difficult to evaluate too, too many samples. So I think it will depend on what you are tasting. Um, research have been done on serving the samples individually or served together. If you have time and you have helpers, it's always good to serve them individually to make sure that they do not compare um, the samples with each other. But unfortunately, it's not always possible. Um, if we use a product like coffee or um, something that needs to be served at a high temperature, we tend to serve them one by one. Thank you, thank you, Maris, for that. Any additional questions? If there's no more questions, I thought we could, could um, generate another mind map on what good sensory practices are. Let me just share my screen. James, can you see the correct screen now? It should be coming. Yes, uh, now I can see it. Okay, so you can go to the website www.menti.com and there's a code 42401277 and you can just write down three words that comes to mind when you think about good sensory practices. And we can share our knowledge with each other. Uh, Stephen, Hello, I please. see your hand. You can go ahead with the question. Yes. Um, how do we apply this to trained panelists? If you have trained panelists already, are we going to do the same practices? Yes, definitely. So the same sensory practices we use for consumer studies and for um, trained panels. So there's a question from Henry. He says, is it ad advisable? Thank you for the presentation. Is it advisable to choose sensory analysts who have previous experience of the product being analyzed? That's part one. Part two, what effect does it have on the results? Um, thank you for the question. I've had experience in the past where if people ask too much of the sample it tend to influence their results so if they know it's a um, shelf life study they are waiting for samples to taste different when times as time go on so preferably we would prefer that the people that participate do not know too much of the study or the samples um, that they will evaluate. 
obviously if it's not possible um you would would just tr try to train them to um to be as unbiased as possible thank you for the participants on the mentimeter Uh, any more questions while it's there? I, it seems people are still responding to the Mendimeter question. Please let's control the... Put, put your mic under mute, under mute your mic, please. Thank you. I think if there are no more questions, James, can you see if there's more questions available or that someone posted? It seems there are no more questions at the moment, uh, Marisa. Well, I'd like to thank you all for participating and sharing your experience. If you have any questions, you are welcome to to answer to ask us. Um, contact anyone to contact me. Um, yes, James' pres presentation will be at eleven, so we'll take a short break and then we can come back for James' presentation. Thank you, Marisa. And uh, I see on your Mentimeter uh, slide there. Uh, it seems plan plan is coming so dominant and there's also consistency non-bias uh, don't influence isolation and random codes don't yes. influence thank you so much for sharing that i think um with sensory my main thing is always you need to plan to make sure that your results will be valid in the end wonderful Thank you so much, Marisa, for the nice presentation. And uh, if there are no more questions, I would like to thank our participants for the present um, session. And uh, now we are going to stop the recording and we have a short break uh, until 11 o'clock for the next uh, session. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.